That is me, and I am joined here by Mr. Leo Kane with Burial Engineering and Inspections. For hour number two. I'm we so are excited back. about hour number two. We're back for hour number two. Missing Adam Talley this week. and uh, do Adam's insurance tip of the day? Yeah. Do you know we have one for him? Yeah, I have one for him. Okay. Shoot. Go. Hi, this is Adam Talley with Talley Insurance, Not and you're like. listening to Katrina Madewell here on Tampa Home Talk. I've got your insurance tip of the week for you. <laughs> this is the two-minute tip of the week. Now, the end of the year... Good insurance. <laughs> End of the year, when you have off from work, a lot of places are closed down. It's a good time to get yourself in order. One of your goals for 2020 should be, is to be make sure that you're properly insured. Make sure you take a look at your policies. Make sure you take a look at your property appraiser, evaluation of your home. Make sure that you're covered for at least that. Make sure you have the right coverage. It's quiet this time of year. It's a good time to catch up on yeah, little stuff Yeah, it's a good time like to that. catch up stuff around the house. Also a good time of the year to uh, be thinking about putting money aside for those, those capital projects like... I need a new roof in the next three years. Start saving a little bit of money now so three years from now you can get yourself that new roof. Again, this is Adam Talley with Talley Insurance, and that's your insurance tip of the week. That's Leo. Everybody knows your voice by now. I changed the voice for that. No, no, I went no. I with a higher-pitched voice. They know it's you. I changed it. A higher-pitched voice. All right. So, so, Adam, if you're listening, let me know how I did. I want you to text how I did to 813-377-2775. Let, let us know how we did for your insurance tip of the week. Again, this is just for Adam. Text Or our listeners can let the hate mail begin. Go ahead and get it. 813-377-2775. Let us know if we captured your insurance tip of the week correctly. All right. So according to Norda Real Estate, I'm going to give you 36 facts about the Tampa, Florida housing market and some general statistics. Pretty cool. Tampa has an unemployment rate of only 4.5%. If I can talk this morning, I'm going to give you these 36 facts. 4.5%. Yeah, I have to tear apart each one. So with the unemployment rate, they only count people collecting unemployment. So if you go more than six months, you drop off the rate and you still don't have a job. Or if you're somebody that is self-employed that pretty much wouldn't be able to get unemployment anyway, right? Well, yeah, true. If you, you're unemployed, you can go out of... Yeah, so it's only people collecting unemployment. No, I mean, self-employed, sorry, self-employed. Yeah, it's only people collecting unemployment. There's a lot of self-employed people I think wouldn't collect it, for sure. Anyway, number two, Tampa is the fastest growing city in the state of Florida. Would totally concur with that. Oh, definitely. We have When one. you look at our major cities, right, in Florida, you have Miami, Orlando, Jacksonville, and Tampa. When you pick the four of those, it's a no-brainer, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, we covered that. We're like, I think Wesley Chapel was number three in the nation for for return on investment and growth. And when you look at like what you can buy elsewhere, it's an amazing place to live. Like I just came back from Phoenix and I can't even believe what their prices are. There's no grass there. There is like no grass there. You're this talking my weird language. Desert climate. I a couple of cactuses, never have to mow the lawn. You are totally talking. Ugh, I don't like have to it. rake up oak leaves this time of the year. You know how many oak leaves I land on my deck every year? I would rake the oak leaves before I would live in that climate. I personally. Would love that climate. But oh. Tampa's fastest growing city in Florida. So the moderate price increases expected in 2017. I would concur with that. We are definitely moderate. We have had moderate price increases since 2017. They have not been anything major. So this is an article from 2016. No. No, wait a minute. This has to be old. No, this has to be from 2016. Moderate price increases expected for 2017. So this is Norda, realestate.com. This, this is, is two a, years old. Mimi, you're fired. <laughs> this is a three-year-old article. Well, let's see how many of these are still relevant. This is going to be interesting to watch. The well, trend you know what? I noticed right here because I didn't think so at all. I was looking at some of the things on here, like number six is the median price is 225. No. That's not wrong. There's no way because it's closer to 300. Why don't we skip the ones that talk about percentage? Well, actually, yeah. The, Median rent, medium household income. Yeah, this is just older. So this is us looking backwards. This is still factual. Growth yeah. population fuels housing needs. Of course. For sure. I just love the way that Tampa is really trying to become the next Silicon Valley. It's trying to get a lot of the electro boomers out here, the dot-com boomers out here. I'm making up terms at this point. Boomer. You know, it's crazy. I one of the uh, the When I went to Phoenix, the class that I was in, there was a guy in there that was with the Keller Williams office in Silicon Valley. <laughs> and it was funny when you listen to them because they have no inventory. Like they, there's just nothing to sell there. Yeah. And when it is for sale, it's like 2 million bucks for a little cracker shack. Yeah. They have no nothing for sale and no one that can buy it. <laughs> 
Well, a lot of those tech people like group up together and actually buy stuff together. So I, don't, I had a feeling this was off. And now that I read that, I know why. It's so we're going to table this. Four-year-old article. Because I know like the rent prices and stuff on here are not right. Well, we've got this great article of when you're trying to make an offer yeah. as attractive as possible. So that's a that's a good point because we have a lot of properties that like we're seeing multiple multiple offers on stuff. For example, I had that remember that little one that was just 90,000 I told you it was totally revamped. Yeah. It didn't even last 4 days. I mean, I knew it wouldn't. And one of the ladies I met last night actually worked for the schools, was very interested in it, but we already had a contract on it. So I said, I'll do what I can to find you something else in the neighborhood. That's the best bet we can do. Because really, under 100000 there is almost nothing available at all. At all. Um, we have a couple available and a few new ones. Shall we talk about houses. those real quick? Open houses. Let's talk about open. I love open houses. We do. So we got two on Saturday from 12 to 4 p.m. Zephyr Hills and Thanatasso. Wow, yeah, how are you going to be at both places Tassa. at once? They're not really near each other. Well, if you're looking in the Wesley Chapel, Zephyr Hills area, you're probably not looking in Thanatasso and vice versa. True. And if you're looking in the Wesley Chapel area, we just mentioned that it's the one of the, th- the the third in the nation for ROI and fastest growth. And we've got 36005 Stable Wilk Avenue. Wilk is like milk with a W in Zephyr Hills. we got a four bedrooms, two bathrooms house. For two thirty, why is it this low? Two thirty-five. I think it needs a little bit of work. I've got another one too. Yeah, I knew it's going to be only a year old. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. That one's what somebody on my team's listing, so I don't know a whole lot about yeah, that. Yeah, I one. mean, this is a great deal. I mean, I if I was in the market for a house, which I'm only in the market for an office, but if I was in the market for a house, I would definitely check this out. The price is right. It's a year old. Uh, I think it's underpriced. I really do. Uh, it's in the Silverado Ranch. Again, that's 36005 Stable Wilk with think, a W. I think they moved up in size. That's what I think the deal was with that. But it's brand new. Yeah, no, this is great. Um, we also have 1419 Greeley Court. It's not actually listed yet. It's a coming open soon. House? Not yet. Oh. It's a 3 2 in Meadow Point. So if you're looking for something like oh, that. I love Meadow Point. It's a great, great, great house. I like they, how it says Meadow Point on a cul-de-sac. Everything's on a cul-de-sac this, in Meadow Point. This particular seller is already under contract to build something new, and theirs is coming very close to fruition. So we're going to be getting their house live on the market as well. I have another open house for you. Again, both of these open houses are from 12 to 4. This one's at 9905 Ramshorn Street. Ramshorn. Ram, Ram, Ramshorn. Oh, Ram, Ramshorn. 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 It's either Probably Ramshorn. Ramshorn or Ramshorn. I know now I'm confused. Probably Ransworm. It's in Thanatassa. So the Nonasassa. So if you can pronounce the city you live in, I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to pronounce <laughs> the, the street. Um, this one actually just went on the market yesterday. It's three bedrooms, two bathrooms. It's on a quarter acre. Built in 01. Built in 2001. And it's for 139000 This is another one I don't see lasting very long. No, nope, but it's a deal. I haven't seen that one at all. Again, it's someone else This is going to be gone. This, is probably, this might be gone within the hour. So I feel like we're QVC at this point. <laughs> so look at this lovely <laughs> house on display here on my fingers. 9905 Rams Hard Street. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pronounce it. But no, Florida. Uh, it's 2001. It's been on the market for less than a day. I tell you what, 139900 You won't find anything for move. that. It is right. price to move. Color Texas, if you want some info on this, we'll send you some pics. 813 Port, beautiful oak tree in the front. It's actually almost point. It's closer to a half, point three nine. Uh, yeah, I'm just. This is just. I, 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 I would be surprised that this one's available for us to talk about, but um, it's going at the open house. It's going to be open Saturday, no matter what, twelve to four. Okay? It's, it's gone tomorrow. So it's just gone tomorrow. If you don't get in on this now, <laughs> listeners, it's gone tomorrow. Same right. thing with this stable walk. Color this, Texas. This, if you want information on this or so your house? Low. These prices. These are stupid prices. 813-377-2775. You can call or text us. Stupid off air. prices. Why are you getting houses this low? You can get more money for these people. It's, we support the comps. What are you, you talking can about? Get more money. Now for you're the real estate ones. expert. I yeah, love I'm a real it. estate expert now. Yeah, let's have fun with this one. 813-377-2775. All right. So if you're trying to make your offer attractive, right? And looking at some of the stuff, especially in this you price, price point. these two houses like this. This is the best way to make these things attractive. Yep. So here's the thing. Um, be competitive right out of the gate. You can always renegotiate stuff later. That would be my tip for you right away. So in the house, may look okay. may look great, right? To the naked eye. But what you don't see under the surface can be things that are very problematic and can also be really big issues later. So for example, a typical buyer, they won't be able to spot asbestos. 
nor would they see any evidence of termite infestation or a leak inside the HVAC system, right? Well, I hope not, because if you notice those three things, you've got bigger issues going on. Well, there's a lot of things that you're not going to see, right? Most buyers are not going to poke their head into the sink and little things like that. They're definitely not on the roof or in the attic. We want to pay attention to all these things to make sure that it's thoroughly inspected with barrel engineering and inspections. They won't miss anything. I can promise you that. I love this. Like a two-hour infomercial. Thank you, Katrina. <laughs> Seriously, they're they're good. I mean, I wouldn't buy anything without you. 813-377-2775. So let's talk about how to make your offer really attractive when we come back and also still protect you very much so in the house you're buying. Feel free to call or text us, 813-377-2775. We'll be back in just a minute. Well, good morning. Welcome back. This is uh, the second hour. We're talking right now on how to make your house as attractive as possible. We've got two different perspectives. You've got Katrina, which is the real estate agent, and you've got Leo, which is the real estate... No, the, the home inspector. Yeah, that. Anyway, you know, by the way, I just have to say we had a great time last week at our holiday party. We had some of our listeners come. That's awesome. We had somebody from your office come. Of course, I couldn't be there. We had Pat George and his wife, Amy, come. Always a great time. And some of our listeners are really excited to meet you, Pat. It was really a nice time, too. Um, a lot of folks. And uh, you had a real nice professional photographer this week. We and did. The guy that actually came and did our photos this time, he's really hard to get. Like, we booked him probably six months in advance. He did my daughter's senior photos. He's really good. And, and because you pulled Pat away from Viardas, they went out of business last week. Oh, did they now? They did. Are you kidding? Of course I'm kidding. Definitely closed now. And if not Katrina, they will be in the near future. I yeah. don't know. Oh, Why, what my happened? gosh. <laughs> well, you know, at the holiday parties and things that you do, I don't have really a lot of time to go by there. And my New Year's resolution for next year is to lose weight. And the way to lose weight is you... Get rid of tequila. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you can just go with my favorite mixer with tequila, ice. Oh, well, that's usually what he does. That's what I do. So, yeah, we had a great time. If you guys are listening next year, definitely join us or our picnic in the park. Don't feel weird because you I listen to us on the, the air park. and show up. We really love to meet our listeners. I love picnic in the park, except when it's during Hurricane Dorian. Yeah. I don't know about you, Pat, but I, I love meeting our people that listen to the show and give us feedback. It's For me, it's really exciting. Well, we're not. Really nicely. The bad thing about it, though, is that you didn't have your studio up so they can see that. Well, we actually turned our studio into the photography room. We took this table oh, and all this equipment out. Did you wonder why everything's a little bit upside down and inside out in here? No, I was just panicked this morning when I couldn't figure out why the camera wasn't holding a battery yeah. charge. So, But we have really great lighting and stuff in here. If you ever watch our YouTube videos or watch us on a Facebook Live, and Make sure you, you smash, and sub smash the like, smash. subscribe, smash, smash the like subscribe give yeah. me a thumbs up and read it we have good lighting in here and so it, it made for really good lighting on the photography pictures as well we don't even have a reddit we need to have a tampa home talk so disc disc discord we need to have a discord for tampa home talk okay sure yeah let me know anyway so inspections let's go back to that for a minute one of the things and you know it was interesting this article that i read it was saying something about if you're on your seventh property and it's a bidding war and you keep getting outbid don't waive your inspections i can't imagine somebody actually waiving their inspections but we do have some investors that do they buy and sell a lot of property and they just they don't even get an inspection i'm willing to if, if i do the strategy where i look at the home in advance i'm willing to waive inspection well you're an inspector it doesn't count <laughs> come on yeah, but yeah, we very rarely see anything that's waived inspections. It's just, even just a five-day, we've seen them as low as five days periods, but yeah, you don't want to waive inspection because you, most of the time you can't do the level of snooping around someone's house before you put an offer in. So let's talk about one of the times where we often see inspections being waived, and that's for an auction property. Oh, yeah. So most of the time, we don't recommend that majority of our buyers actually buy an auction property for a couple of reasons. For one, there's a couple different types of auctions, right? There's absolute auctions. There's reserve auctions. There's a difference in those. The absolute auctions means for sure the final bidder will buy it for that price. And the reserve auctions means that they actually have a minimum number they're trying to get. And if they don't meet it, they'll pretty much debunk the whole thing and, and re-auction it again. So what you need to know about auctions is you don't get really any due diligence period at all for anything. So that means no appraisal contingency, no inspection contingency. Sometimes these things really don't even have totally clear title. 
Yeah, I mean, it's dangerous because I used to buy at auction. These would be, I guess, reserve auctions because the banks are basically foreclosure auctions on the courthouse steps. Um, it, it's dangerous. You get, you, you'll get notice of a property in advance and you have to do all your research and you can buy. There's, there's people who actually sell packets of research to the investors on all the properties. So you can buy one of those packets. You can be fully knowledgeable in it, but you're really not going to get on the property. You're really not going to get a good look at it. Um, the nice thing about those packets is they generally tell you what the bank wants as the minimum. So you can see if it's even viable, but I mean, it's so neat going on the, when they were in person. Because property would go up, bank would say $100, no one would counterbid, bank take back property. And then a sudden, all of a sudden, one property would pop up and the whole room explodes in a bidding war. And that's how you know it's a deal. If you've got cash, it's not that big of a deal in the appraisal process. Because um, you've already looked at comps, you have a really good idea what the house is worth Well, there anyway. is no appraisal process. That's right, there's not. That's what I'm saying. But the two things you have to definitely do in advance is your title search and your inspection of some sort. Right, even if you just take Drive by a general it. contractor in there to have a look at the property, do something. Well, the courthouse auctions, you can't do that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because the yeah you can't do it on a courthouse auction because the bank doesn't actually take title until the auction. Which means that people you, could actually still be living there. Yeah, so it could be trespassing. So yeah, that's uh, that's one of the downsides of the auction. And then one of the other things we have on here, which our listener called on last hour, talking about the pre-listing inspection. This is huge. It's a really big deal, again, because you can find a lot of these defects up front, know exactly what you're getting into so that you can protect yourself from future negotiations. That's my biggest, like, like my biggest selling point on the pre-listing inspection has nothing to do with the fact that I want to get an inspection. It has everything to do with the fact that I want the seller to be protected from the buyers trying to the, the, the offer pad style renegotiation yeah. at the last minute. Like, oh, d- did you know about all this? No. Okay, I'm taking 15000 off the price of the house. Off versus my already low offer. Of, of my lower low offer. As opposed to, did you know about this? Yeah, we did. And we told you about it in advance. So Plus, their contracts price. are very one-sided. So if you actually get into a contract with OfferPad, not only are you going to end up paying about 12% to sell your home for a lower offer, but you're just going to net less money. I mean, we saw this last month with one of our sellers. They were under contract because a listing agent couldn't sell it, wasn't marketed well, should have been staged, should have been professionally photographed. And the listing agent just wanted to sell it. So she kept pushing the seller into taking this OfferPad offer. And they actually did they took it they accepted it and then that's what happened was after the inspection they came back and they said we want to renegotiate based on this this and that and we're talking about minor stuff right like the carpet needed to be stretched really minor stuff and so they at that point decided to seek another opinion well they were already under a listing contract and a buyer contract with offer pad listing agent let them out and offer pad let them out too but not without a fee of course, but I mean, so they, they charge them a pur- significant fee to cancel, they which is ridiculous. They serve a purpose, though, because they're like a hybrid wholesaler. They will buy distressed properties. They will help people who really need cash and really need to get out of their house. I presume, but here's the thing: we have a list of cash buyers. So if you or someone you know is in that position, call us first. I can guarantee you, we will get you an offer higher than what OfferPad will give you. Because even with their offer, there's fees and expenses off yeah. of that. Plus, they're going to hit you back for ne- after negotiations. And that's going to be likely right before closing. That's the way they want it. So in our case, with a seller that we helped that got out of that contract, we netted them about thirty five, thirty six thousand dollars $36,000 more than what they would have netted on their offer pet offer. Yeah, and not everyone has access to Katrina, so um, sometimes you just got to make the deal you got. You do. Just call or text us, and uh, we'll give you some fast information as well. We can give you just a general market value if you want that right away by email or come actually see your home person and give you a a market analysis of what your home looks like. We'll look at comparable homes and do what we call a CMA. And you can call our Texas at 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. That is our off-air number. So one of the tips I'll give you too when you're under contract to buy a home is to move quickly. So mm-hmm. once you get under contract, it's that effective day, meaning everybody is signed. You've had a meeting with the minds, buyer and seller agree. All the changes have been initial. Now that's your effective date of the contract. I'm so jealous of that. Now you may have seven or 10 days, maybe longer in some cases to get an inspection, but move quick, right? So that's one of the challenges we had, Leo, is you guys were so backed up, is it would take us so long to get you to, out there, which kind of would shorten our time after it. So the sooner we can get you in there, the better, because we have time to check out additional items, 
right? On yeah. the inspection report. And that's why we hired a new inspector. TJ started with us last week. He's being trained right now. That's awesome. We love that. We love how you're always right on the cusp of what people need. So, um, you know, almost every real estate transaction out there, it's going to be contingent upon a, a home inspection that's up to the buyer's satisfaction. Um, and they can also be contingent on other inspections as well, right? Like even like your appraisal inspection and that appraisal coming in. More times that's going to fall under your commitment to get a loan mm -hmm. because the buyer typically would have to pay the difference if the seller didn't want to reduce it. But again, you know, not every home is created equal. So definitely get your inspection because there's so many things in there that you're just not going to see. I can guarantee you, Leo, if you were to come to my house, you would see things that I don't see because I live in my home every day and I'm not going to notice it and I'm not going to see things you would. Plus I'm not in the attic. You're never going to invite me to your home. You don't want me to do that. Well, you might have a point there. I, like, I would invite you to my home before I sold it. You're coming. To, I'm coming over to your house. Come over to meet the meet the wife and kids, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, play some board games. And I bring my ladder in and check out the addicts. I want to know what air I'm breathing. There's a couple things that we see pretty often on some home inspections. There, it's I would say there's a few things we see on probably nine out of ten inspection reports. So let's talk about those things when we come back in just a minute nice. after the break. I love this. And then you can talk about. How we see them all the time, they're kind of minor, but why they're important to get fixed. Sound good? Life and safety. Life and yeah. safety. All right. Our offer number is 813-377-2775. you got a question or a topic for our show, call us. We are live on today's show. You can get Pat George. 888-404-1010. Uh, yeah. Ask him directly or be piped in. 888-404-1010. We want to hear from you, the listener. As in Money Talk 1010, right? Yeah. 888-404-1010. <laughs> we'll be back. Stick around in just a minute. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Leo Kane here with Katrina Madewell. We are talking about one of my favorite topics. <laughs> Inspections. Inspections. And um, insurance. And insurance. You know, I want to talk about some of these little things that we see. There's a couple little defects that we pretty much see on like, I would say eight or nine out of every inspection report. And these are little things you can totally have repaired or replaced or like up to par before you ever list your home and keep your home really in good condition, even if you're not thinking about listing it. Um, just take care of these things because they can have bigger impacts that are long term on your on the structure of your home so Leo one of the things that I mentioned we were talking about during the break and before we dive into that actually the hot and the cold what does that mean when, they, when you see reverse polarity you're hot and you're cold neutral wire, wires are backwards you guys plug this little thing in there and you can tell that it has reverse polarity what does that mean why is it a big deal to fix and it's a big deal to fix because it, it actually sometimes will spin motors backwards so like a hair dryer a computer fan those fans will be spinning backwards and that's not – when they're spinning backwards, they're pushing air in instead of pulling air out or – yeah. So that could uh, that can blow your motors really fast. That's that's one of the, the downsides to it, especially on any two-pronged outlets that um, you one, one prong is fatter than the other. So sometimes yes. you have a two-pronged outlet and you try and put it in the wall and you can't because you have to turn it around to yes. put it in the wall. Yes, yes, yes. Those devices will fry in with this hot neutral reverse condition. Really? Is yeah. that so? Okay. I wonder if that happened to one of my hair irons. It's like totally just stopped working. That could probably, that probably is it. So um, is, there, is there any big like electrical or fire hazards with that when it's reversed? Well, yeah. I mean, if your motors are frying, um, there's a very big chance that uh, you could be causing some serious damage there. And so um, there's no way really for somebody to know that without plugging that thing in, right? It's no, where they just put to, the wires in the wrong place. Yeah. And that's, it's careless error on the account of the electrician. It's a quick thing to fix, but be, have an electrician fix it. Uh, well, I, oftentimes I say you can find a 12-year-old on YouTube in a five-minute video to fix something like that. No, I don't know about that. I would have an electrician fix it. I would recommend the YouTube video. So while we're on electrical, let's talk about a couple more things. Double tap breakers. What does that mean? And then also the open panels. Uh, the double tap breakers is, is uh, indicative of a bigger problem. So you, t you have your electrical panel box. You take the panel cover off, and you see two wires going into one breaker. Uh, one... That breaker could be overloaded, so it could trip more. Two, if you have a short, you're now frying two circuits as opposed to one. And three, it can be indicative of the fact that the box itself might not be large enough for the home. 
which happens a lot, right? We see that in some of the older homes, how the electrical needs of a home change and grow over time, and it still has that older box. And some and was that that probably was an acceptable form at some point, right? Well, Maybe in the eighties, did they double tap? Was that acceptable? No, it was never. There were some breakers that are meant for double taps; those are acceptable. And there are also some. They're breakers that are meant to be double tapped, but they they have two two little switches. That's what's acceptable. But no, this often happens with older homes because the home gets upgraded over time. We use a lot more electricity now than we used to, and. They just run out of places to put wires. So, I mean, what's the bigger issue with that? Well, the bigger issue is you've, your panel is potentially undersized. Which your, means? Your, your breaker is going to trip more. So <laughs> you turn your computer on and you turn your TV on and your breaker trips. And it's tripping because there's too much voltage so moving at once? There's too much electricity moving at once. So what about the open panels, those little open holes that you see on the electrical panel box when you open the door? That's pretty easy to fix with a piece of plastic. I mean, that generally means, what I see that a lot is, let's say you had a five ton AC unit, or you had two, you had two three and a half ton AC units and you moved to a five ton AC unit, you're gonna have breakers taken out and then you just put the plastic cover there. The reason why it's a hazard is basically if you have a hole where you can just stick your finger in and touch the electricity, you electrocute yourself. But that will get flagged on the inspection report, right? Definitely. So it's one of those things. Just, we see that quite a bit actually. More so than the double taps, we just see that there's a hole that we could stick our fingers in and electrocute ourselves. I think that's where it's a common thing where like the HVAC person put in one bigger unit and they just left this hole. It's common. I mean, they, they don't have the part with them. They're just not going to run to Home Depot to grab a 10 cent part. They're just going to kind of leave it. Um, it. Sometimes we see it where they actually did put it in, but those are flimsy piece of plastic. It falls out. We see that quite a bit too. So it's not necessarily the contractor did something wrong. Just over time, they, they could fall out. One of the ones we see a lot, too, is, is wood rot on the bottom of the jams, like on either on the outside of the garage door or that side entry door I for the garage. That. That. And that's where a lot of these homes don't have gutters, so water kind of splatters off the roof, and it splashes back up on the bottom of the door and creates this wood rot. There's a couple reasons why that's an issue. I'll tell you from, an ins from the financing part of it, it'll trip you up if you're getting VA for sure and possibly FHA. That's wood rot, yeah. It's wood rot, and there's actually a certain type of termite that lives in there we call wood decay fungi and so no, that's not a termite that's a fungi they treat it as termites though well, they like the lenders look organisms right yeah. but they yeah they treat it as if it has termites that's why i really like the door company we had on last week because their fiberglass doors are fiberglass on all six sides a lot of time your fiberglass doors will be wood and that's where we're going to find this so that was really neat last week when we had him it was last week right i think so yeah yeah the weeks are kind of run together. It's 12 days before Christmas, you know. 12 lords of leaping. Yes, yes. All right. So another thing, too, that we see are things with the gutters, right? Where the gutters are either run backwards or they're full. Yeah, they're full of debris, especially this time of the year. You need to be cleaning your gutters out every other week, basically. This are time you kidding me? Every other week? With the oak trees? Ooh. I mean, it, it's it's a serious thing. You got to actually maintain your, especially you have the oaks around. If you don't have oaks around it, you don't have to do it. The What's thing, the likelihood I can put you on the roof of our building when you leave here? And here? <laughs> I got to go. I have a phone call to make. Anyway, the thing is, though, sometimes it's people think it's cute. Oh, I see this little shrub growing out of my gutter. There's a tree in my That's gutter. 18 months of neglect. Ouch. I see that. I'm like, this gutter hasn't been maintained for 18 months. If there's a tree in if the gutter? If there's a tree in the gutter. And then sometimes it, it's just a little one, just like a little like five or six inch tree. So like when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or Manny's and you buy a, a four foot, five foot tree, that's like mm -hmm. five or six years old. It takes a long time for those trees to grow like that. So yeah, if you're thinking about that, when you're looking at your Christmas trees this year, you might want to consider a full <laughs> Christmas tree because it's better for the environment. Yes, it is. It is. But some people just love real trees. You can just get real tree scent. Yeah, I suppose. So also, what about the gutters running backwards, right? Have you seen that where it actually creates drainage and slope issues? Yeah, so when you put your, we'll just say, we'll just assume the gutter installers did it correctly. Uh, but you really should do a marble test. When the gutters, if you get new gutters installed, do a marble test. Take a marble, put it on the, on the quote unquote high side of the, mar on the gutter, give it a little push and see if it rolls all the way down. 
away from the house. Uh, well, it rolls all the way down, like through the gutter system down the downspout. If it doesn't do that, they need to redo the pitch. But let's just assume the pitch was correct. What ends up happening is you get the leaves in there, and it starts to weigh down a piece of the gutter. So you lose your pitch. So now the water just sits there. And then the water starts splashing up against the roof. And then it starts eating that wood. And then it starts eating your truss. And then the, your whole ha part of the house starts dipping in that direction at the roof line. And then it stores more water. And then it collapses. It's little things like over time that kind of add up. And we're busy, right? Everybody's busy. So the likelihood of everybody noticing these things are slim to none. I mean, Pat, how often do you check your gutters on the outside of the back part of your house? Um, ooh, I probably do it once uh, every couple of weeks. So you clear out your gutters every couple of weeks? I know I check them. And check them out? Oh, yeah. No, I'll check them. Yeah, because, uh, and I don't have, you know, my entire house is not gutterized. Only, you know, <laughs> You know the front and back so it's pretty easy yeah i mean you basically the you want gutters over your walkways so unless you have like a triangle which is a gable but if you have an eave which is like a flat you basically want gutters over your walkways so it, it's, it becomes a safety issue when you're trying to run into and out of your house to avoid that big deluge of water that waterfall effect i mean i've seen people like seriously injure themselves trying to do that what about like on the side of the houses too we see this quite a bit as well right where there's no gutters and, and so this, all this that water erosion. pools yeah on the on the side of the house and there's almost like a little trench right next to your mm -hmm. your house about what a foot or so off where yeah, the roof line would be fruit. We're like this this house might and then we got stair step cracks next to the next to that little trench we know there's some uh, there's some settlement going on yeah, I mean, which really could happen anywhere in Florida, right? That's soft, sandy soil. But it's you have to keep the water out and away from your home. That's the bigger issue, right? So you could put – there's a couple different ra ways you could fix. That wouldn't be just gutters, right? That would be one way to fix it. Yeah. The other thing you could do would be to plant some shrubs or trees that would kind of soak in or, or – Medium root ball plants, hibiscus, oleanders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the other thing, too, is you could do some rocks to kind of grade it away from the house. Yeah, I like this. Well – I like that, but that tends to be an expensive fix because rock's not cheap. But it looks beautiful, much better than mulch. And you don't have to replace it as often as you would for mulch. Very true. One of the other things we'll talk about, too, is the, the TPR valve and the hot water heater. I see that one a lot, too. Yeah, it's, it's a 50-cent piece of plastic they have to screw in. I mean, all water heaters will have a TPR valve. If you now, buy, what is it? What is it? Save, oh, it's, it's temperature to pressure to... relief. Right. So if your water heater gets too hot, because there's a great physics equation called PV equals NRT, so pressure equals temperature, that's the P of the PV, pressure and volume, equals NRT, that T is temperature. So as your temperature goes up, your pressure goes up. If your pressure goes up too high, your water heater explodes. So there's a relief valve to prevent that from happening. Now, Like it explodes all over the garage? I heard it can go straight to the roof oh, also, it, it, right? It, just imagine it's like a rocket at that point. Mm. It's, like, it's like rocket. It's just like you got all that pressure pushing your water heater somewhere so what you do is you have a valve we, sh we should have asked the uh insurance guys when they were here about that the underwriters yeah if they've ever had a claim where the the hot water heater became a rocket that's pretty cool so the reason why so that it comes with just a valve and the valve is facing out what you want to do is you want to put a uh, pvc on it so it faces down because what ends up happening if you're standing next to it when it decides to off jet 250 degree water at your face you want to make sure it's going down towards the ground and not at your face but you don't this is not something i'd recommend the homeowner do like you want a plumber to do this add the, add the 60 cent piece of no this is definitely something i'd have a homeowner do it is you a would 60 cent piece of pvc that has a thread that you just kind of screw in see i don't know i probably wouldn't i would call a plumber for that I, one. no that i definitely would say a homeowner can, should do it is one of the easiest fixes, and it's so cheap. Isn't our perspective different on that? We'll have to see you uh, demonstrate that and save it on YouTube. Wait, wait, can, Katrina, can I see your pen for a second? Can you do this? Can can you can can you do this? Don't be funny with can, me. Can you do this? Can you turn us? Can you turn the pen? There, you just threaded it. It's so simple. You you have your daughter do it. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, just 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 do that. All right. What else did I miss? Those are the big ones. I mean, uh, those are those are the. That's the ones I off the top of my head. Yeah, see. I mean the the hot neutral reverses, the gutters, the TPR valves, the door jam. That's that's our low hanging fruit. Those are like defects that I know if a home inspector doesn't find them, they might not have done their job correctly. Don't waive inspections, no matter what you do. Yeah, not a good idea. So many defects. All oh, right. Geez. That's like most of what I had. So if you got another question for us, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to answer it. Ten ten. That's a studio call on lines, by the way.
Yeah, that's what we want to hear. Yep, 888-404-1010. Like Money Talk 1010? 888-404-1010. Give us a ring. Let us know your questions. You've got Leo, the home inspection expert, in the studio. So call in. We'll talk to you soon. Be back in just a couple minutes. Well, good morning. Welcome back. I think I keep bring us back in from every segment, Katrina. Yes, I think you did. That's okay. Awesome, awesome, Save awesome. my voice okay. a little bit of room there. And I'm the one that's coughing the whole hour. I know that you are. Interesting. So I've got, I, I, I just, I still can't believe these stupid prices on these two houses. And you know, I the interesting, talk about them again. you know, the interesting thing too, we are actually selling our stuff quick. Did you notice how big the list was last week? It was, this is all that's left, isn't it? A lot of the stuff is gone. A lot of stuff we had listed last week is gone. That's like already under contract. So well, at these prices, so we got two open houses. These Saturday. houses will not survive the weekend. These prices are too, too stupidly good. We got a 2018 home. This one's pretty, by the way, and it they're including great. the furniture in there. It's got the gable dormer right above the entryway, so you don't have a gutter system problem there. Um, this is 36005 Stable Wilk with a W, Ave in Zephyr Hills. Four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a year old. 235 Stupid price of 235 This is just amazing. amazing. Now, the cool thing about this, too, it's got a Zephyr Hills address, but it's really right there on the cusp of Wesley Chapel. Yeah, I mean, it, this, this is this is a no-brainer, especially since Pasco, that section of Pasco County and Zephyr Hills is rated the number three in the nation for ROI. Something this low, I mean, you guys you guys priced this wrong. As so. well as the, no, we didn't. It priced supports wrong. the comps. There's priced also wrong. new construction going on in there. Priced wrong. No, no, no. Another home not. that's, this one, this one I might just buy with my pocket money. I mean, this is 139000 2000. I don't have that kind of pocket money, but 139000 <laughs> 2001 literally went on the market yesterday. We are talking about 9905 Ramhorn Street in? The Nonasasa. So I not, like that area. It's a little hotbed area, by the way. It's great. I mean, you're, you're dealing with almost half an acre. You're dealing with three bedrooms, two bathrooms. This is just... This is just out outrageous, but I do need There's to There's a lot of preserves right there too in that area, which I just like it because it's like, it's densely populated. That's I just what I like was going to mention. Oh, you were? I saw you The AC is only two years old. I mean, this is, I just can't believe the price on this is just that low. So between the two of these, uh, for all walks of life, if you have a huge family, we've got a 4-2 for you. If you're more of a retirement, you want to downsize, we've got a 3 we've got a 3-2 in, in a rural area. So I've got a curious question for you, Leo. Yeah. And try to forget about the fact that you're actually looking for a building for your office to go in right now. But let's imagine. Well, if you had one at these prices, it'd be gone. Let's, let's imagine you and Nicole are looking to buy a house. I know you don't want to move from Ebor, but let's just say you're, you're looking to buy a house and you're in that looking phase, right? Like you're with an agent, you're with me poking around. You're not actually well, getting doing inspections. That. I'm doing all that. I know, but let's just say that we're in a property we're looking. Tell me when you're in that property, because I know your wife's going to be looking at totally different things than you are. She's going to look at the kitchen where, and the master bathroom. Where are your eyes going as soon as you walk in? Like, tell me, like you're pulling up to the house. What are you looking at? What are you noticing in your engineer brain? Oh, that's no, wired first thing I'm taking a look at is roof line. I'm taking a look at the, the, the roof. As I'm pulling up to the house, I'm looking at the roof. I'm actually looking at the roofs of my neighbor's property. Because mm, good point. Because here's here's how it goes. I know where you're going with this one. My good house has point. five to yeah. seven years of roof, and if I see all the neighbors are replacing their roofs now, I know that's bull. Can't say the word on the air. So well, here's the thing too. You look at the two tab and three dimensional shingles. You'll be able to tell. Yeah, I'd be able to tell how much mm -hmm. life. I, so if a seller tries to tell me they have seven years, ten years of life left on a roof, but all their neighbors are replacing their roofs, I don't believe them. So as I'm pulling up, I look at the roof. When I'm walking around the inside, I'm looking up, always looking up. I'm looking at, for cracks. I'm looking for water stains. Either I'm looking at the AC vents to see if I have mold blowing out of them. Me and my wife's looking at the kitchens and bathrooms. What else? Like what else are you looking around? Those are the, those are the main things. Then I will go into the garage. I'll take a look at the panel. Wait a minute. You said your wife? Yeah, I have a wife. Your wife is working with you? No, no. You, did not, you are not. I'm listening. not buying a house. She, she'll never. She. I'm in my quote unquote forever home. I'm not allowed to sell it. So. No, but you said you were looking on your inspection while your wife is looking for bathroom. No, no, no. no. no, no. This is a I theoretical. asked Leo. I asked Leo this if we were in the, if we were in a property. If I was theoretically looking to buy yeah. a house, where would your eyes go? What would you look at? And he said his wife. Yeah, his wife would be looking at the kitchens and the bathrooms and all the aesthetics. He would be looking up at the ceilings, at the electrical panel and all that I care stuff. Less about, I can care less about the aesthetics. But I will say this. From my investor eye, this 36005 Stable Wilk Ave 
this would be the kind of home I'd buy. See, it's I'm a not... year old, so that means that all the all the little lemons are coming out. It's a beautifully sized. It's stupidly priced. That's what I'm going to jump on. I'll tell you what, the hedge funds too, they're still paying really decent prices for houses, if you ask me. I had one, uh, you know, and I, I, granted, I'm by no means an inspector and you're going to see more things than I ever would, Leo, but I've been doing this for a long time, been around inspections for a long time. So I see things, right, that the average agent might not. And so when I go through for a listing, I'm looking for some of those big things that I know are going to trip up a seller. So for example, one of the things in this, in this property we had, it was had a Sylvania panel. I'm selling it's like two doors down from but where this I live. One right here? No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. It's it's a different one. It's already under contract, getting ready to close. But it had a Sylvania panel, and I said this is going to hang you up for yeah, sure. Yeah, you can't get insurance. Well, it's one of the hedge funds buying it, and so they factored it in there. They already came in a little bit low, but then after inspections, it was about another, I think, 6,300 lower. But all things considered, knowing what all they're going to change, and it had all these weird steps, I felt like it was a deal for the seller. It's in, and that's the thing about me is I'll be really transparent with you. Like if I feel like you'll be hard pressed to get this deal again, I'm going to let you know and highly encourage you to take it. If I feel like we can get you more money and someone's just lowballing you, I'll be the first one to tell you to stick it back on the market. That's good. That's what you need. Because I know there's some realtors that try and pressure their clients into the deal because they want to make their commission. And I know you're not one of them. Yeah, no, we'd rather somebody get a fantastic home. You know, I really, we're, we're all about the relationship. And as um, Pat noticed, I'm sure when we had our holiday party, a lot of our clients are there from, I mean, I've had one right now texting me. It's about a 25 year old client. Like I had them 25 years back. They're originally mortgage clients. They're going to buy this house on Wilk, aren't they? No, they're going to list a house they actually had. She she worked in downtown Tampa for years. Oh, that's a beautiful and area. And would commute from Dade City to downtown. And that's they, terrible commute. Do you know where they live now? They live in Hyde Park. That's a beautiful area. <laughs> the tiny little postage stamp size lot. I got to get more critical. Everything you're like, oh, that's a beautiful area. I can't wait to live there. That's for everything you describe. You know what? You don't have kids yet, but I think if you did, you might change your mind. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, perhaps. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> there might be a reason why you don't have kids, Leo. Um, all right. Any questions? Questions from Nitty Pat? Yeah, Got anything we... else you want us to cover before we wrap up? Covering it pretty well, and uh, I just had a question for you. One of the reasons why Leo or myself haven't been to your house yet is that you have a couple big dogs. I love dogs. I only have one big dog left, and he's a That's baby. A baby. That, a baby? I'm trying to come through that glass door when it's on me. Are you talking about Coda? I don't know. Some big dog that scared me. He's a baby. He's a husky. He likes. He likes to oh, run. Yeah. That's it. That's the one. He scared you. He looks like a wolf. That's yeah, my, my wife's got the perfect theory on dogs. She's like, they're all family and they're all pets. So it doesn't matter how scary it looks. She tries to pet it. And the other question I have is, is your house decorated yet? No. Uh, we actually just got our tree up, but we just decorated it last night. I'm so glad you waited till today to ask me that. <laughs> nope. We're supposed to do it this weekend. Oh, you're behind me. I love it. Yay, I, I feel I, better. I'm just, well, we had the we just had the interior repainted. All right. Well, listen, it's 12 days before Christmas, y'all. We'll be back same time, same place next week. So stick around. Remember, love where you live or we'll fix it. Thanks for listening. Welcome home.